had the pleasure of hosting, well, I guess I conducted the panel, moderated the panel um, that we did together, and I watched her somehow juggle controlling her inner self to respect the ladies on the panel because she's so, she's so powerful. Like this little lady, she just has all this power inside of her. And it was about three or four other ladies on the panel and I had all these questions to ask and I found myself like watching her. Every time I asked the question, all the ladies would answer, of course. But she contained herself in her seat. She wanted to get up so bad, I could tell. And um, just her story, and I've talked about it. That was a year ago. I've talked about it on and off ever since. She impacted my life. She, I repeat things that she said that day. And I thought it would be no better way to pour into all of you besides bringing her here. And I didn't want to do a sit-down interview with her. I said, I want you to have the stage. I want you to do what you do. I want you to be able to be the person that you are and not have to contain yourself with just my, my questions. Um, but I promise you that you will not leave here without feeling like I am her. So without further ado, I would love to present to all of you Dr. Tracy Lynn. <laughs> Oh, you got a you got a court list too. <laughs> Let me help you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Do what you do. All right. Good morning. So today we're talking about leveling up. Leveling up. Her say. Now, I just want to know first of all before I begin. I want to know who's in the room. And I also want to thank a few people in the room. First of all, I want to say thank you to Lady Shawnee Henderson for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to your husband, who is not with us right now. I will see him tomorrow. So thank you both amazing, amazing people, real deal, and ministry. Also want to thank my husband of going on 30 years in a few months. He wasn't the first one, but he was the best one. So I want to thank him for being there, for supporting me and for seeing what he saw in me and didn't try to stop me, block me, or hinder me, push me to be bold and to do all the things that God has called me to do. So I want to know who I'm talking to in this room because no matter what you came here for or thought you came here for, let me share this with you. I was in a soup kitchen, and I was volunteering. And I had my name on the back of my shirt, Tracy Lynn, because as the founder of the jewelry brand, Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry, with more than 100,000 consultants, been able to take that business from a $200 investment and then exit at $100 million. all because of God. So I'm in the soup kitchen volunteering with my name, Tracy Lynn, on the back. And a woman came up to me, beautiful woman who looked worn, who looked worn out, but I could still see her beauty. I could see her smile. And she came up to me and said, that's my name. She said, I, I'm her. That's my name. I said, what's your name? Tracy Lynn. And it's spelled the same way. And she said, but I've been through some things. I could see that. She said, but that's my name. She said, let's take a picture. We got close and we took a picture. And right there, I realized if I had made some different choices, if I would have stayed with the bad him, if I would not have trusted God, there but for the grace of God, go I. 
So my question for you, just like looking at her, was me looking at me in an alternate universe. I'm wondering how many of you sitting here right now are living your life in an alternate universe because you are not walking in the gifts that God has called you to walk in. You're not doing the things God has told you to do because we get fearful. And this is an empowerment session. So when you look at the word empowerment, it means given ability. Well, God gave you the ability. Given access, God opened the door. You're sitting at the table or in the room, so you have access. And the final thing is given permission. I wonder how many of you after today are going to give yourself permission to do and be all that God has called you to do. No longer living in a universe that's not really you. Standing in your authentic self, being all that God has called you to be. So I'm going to ask you the question, because I'm here. And they have invested, Lady Shawnee, they have invested in you. That's what I love about this ministry. They are investing in your potential and in your future. But taking potential to the grave is not cute. Being 80 with potential ain't cute. At some point, you got to walk that thing out. So I want to know, because I need to know who's in the room. How many are in the room that are millionaires? I just want to see. Stand up. If you're a millionaire, stand up. I didn't say manifest it. I said if you are a millionaire, I just want to know who am I talking to. If you call for the midwife to birth that out, I need to know. I'm not counting your bank account. I said, who are the millionaires? You might not have seen 10 cents of it yet. But you know, like I know that we know that she knows that you are already called and got it in you. So, so wait a minute, wait a minute, Lady Shorty. Look, look, let's look around. Everybody look, 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 because you're accountable now. You didn't stood up for that thing. You're accountable. You didn't stood up for it. You need to look around. Look at the money in this room. Look at the multiplied millions in this room. You can have a seat. I have you stand because when I wrote a book and someone asked me, well, how could you write that title and you haven't seen it? I didn't have to see it yet. I had to believe it. It had to be birthed inside. Things are birthed before you ever see it. I remember a prophet came to me. He said, woman of God. And I was sitting in the middle. He said, woman of God, I see you. I'm like, all right. He said, come on up. And I came out. He said, now raise your hands to the Lord. And I raised my hands. He said, woman of God, there is a book in you. There are many books in you. And he whispered the name of the book in my ear. Now, that was a book that the Lord gave me that I didn't want to write. I didn't want to write it because I didn't want to have to explain it. And I didn't want to have to explain it because I didn't want to have to answer questions. But he gave me the name of the book, and then he said, and you don't want to do it, but there's money in you doing it. And I had a book agent, y'all, who wanted to give me an advance, and she wanted to give me an advance on writing something else. But I told her what this book was. She said, but you know what? Go ahead and start writing it. We'll get you the advance. He told me. He came and confirmed the word. And then he told me the name of the chapter. Now, God is that specific in detail. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad I wasn't uh, uh, at a church that knew me because I tore the church up. I laid out on the floor. I rolled in the people with the cloths trying to come and cloth me up couldn't catch me because I was rolling. Then I got up kicking drums. I mean, tore it up because I heard a word. God had already spoken it. He confirmed it, and nobody could stop me. 
But then I got home and stopped myself. Because I remember what the professor said back in University of Michigan that I couldn't write. And then I started taking all these fear deposits that people had tried to deposit on me and didn't do it. With a sure word from the Lord, I didn't do it. Somebody else came along. Somebody say, somebody else. When God has something that he wants in the earth, He's going to use the one that says, I'm ready, use me. Gave them the same name of the book. Gave them almost the identical titles. They got the advance. I did not. I wind up self-publishing the books, and they wound up in my garage. I missed it. I don't ever want you to miss that. And then we go to God, bless me, Lord, bless me indeed. He said, well, I, I was trying to. That was a six-figure advance. They were willing to give you 185000 back then. And I missed it. That's why I'm telling you this story. So when God is speaking to you, even today, write it down. You don't need everybody agreeing with you. You don't, you don't, you don't need that because they can't see what God is doing in you. And the name of the book was The Mind of a Millionaire. See, that's why I didn't want to write it. Because, right, are you a millionaire? Well, at 25, I had made a million. By 28, I had lost a million. But, but when I was writing it, I didn't have it, but I saw it already. And I already knew that millions were in me. And I had someone in ministry, pastoral position, say, well, you can't write that book because that's not you. Oh, it is me. Thank God for Lady Shawnee and Pastor Keon Henderson because they see it. Oh, you better, you better hear me. You better get around people who can see you, who want to invest in you. I don't want you to lose what God has already put in the earth for you. And it doesn't matter if you haven't seen it yet. It matters if you see it inside, if you have the vision to believe for it, God is able to do it. And the Lord is speaking right now to some of you, speaking some things that you are not to tell other people because they can't understand it because they never lived it, they never did it. But he is speaking to you. I know that by the Spirit of God. There's some ideas. I see you writing. Good for you. Write that thing down. And then when you write it down, you're making it plain so that you can run with it. The angels can run with it. Give God something to run with. All right, I'm going to give you three points and hopefully one close. Okay, here we go. First point. This is what everybody always asks me. How do I know what I'm supposed to be doing? How, how do I know what it is? The first thing you got to do is step out and find out. And some of you say, well, I, I, I don't know if I step out. I, I ain't got that kind of time to waste. Well, you better get to stepping then. So you need to step out and find out. You will know as you go. There are things that are already in you that you're not sure about, but you need to step out and find out. I had a desire to, to, to purchase this franchise, a desire. I can't even explain it to you. I, it was just in me because a lot of times we decide on a lot of things that you need to discover. See, gifts and talents are things you discover that's inside of you. But I had this desire for this franchise. I mean, I really wanted it, but the problem was it was 295000 and I had about 5000 But I had a desire deep, and I couldn't shake it. So I kept going up to the franchise people, going to all the meetings like I had all the money, signed up to get my franchise, and they were like, you, 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 you good? I'm good. <laughs> they didn't say, did you have the money? They said, you good, I'm good. <laughs> so I'm speaking this word prophetically to some of you. Listen to this. So. An opportunity came up because I've been going to these meetings for like a year looking for my franchise. So an opportunity came up. There was a uh, operator who was, had to sell his, his franchise. So I had favor. Somebody say favor. <laughs> now, now I, I got to tell you this. 
I got to tell you this. Put a pin in it. Somebody remember, one of my big dogs is in here. You, you, yeah, some big dogs in here. Okay. So, yeah, woof. I hear you. Sit, woof. Okay, don't start now. Y'all don't woof me yet. Let Hold on. So, so we're going to put a pin right there. But there are, in an opportunity, you have to move when the opportunity presents itself. There is a window of time. I know you may not want to believe it, but it's true. There is a window of time when the opportunity opens, the clock is ticking. And it ain't got time for you to try to figure it out. If you should do it, why shouldn't you do it? You need to go through it because what God has for you is already waiting for you. And we're so busy trying to rationalize and you get into analysis paralysis and you don't move. So the window had opened the day I showed up for this franchise. So the particular person, this man, uh, had to sell it. So I went to go meet him, and his franchise did about $295,000. It was seasonal. It was only six months, so that was, that was good revenue. And he was selling it uh, at a discount. I could get it for $75,000. Now, how much money I told you I had? But I went to the negotiation table to buy it at 75. I agreed with the price. The franchise said it was a great price, and I agreed. So we agreed. We were doing, getting ready to do the paperwork. He said, so how are you going to send me the money? You going to wire it? You getting a cashier's check? And I said, what had happened was, I don't quite had a 75 today, but what I was thinking, I would go ahead on, take this store and, and, and run it and pay you from the, the profits. He said, so how much do you have down? I said, well, let me tell you what happened. So <laughs> what I have, I had when we started, I had five, but now I got a good solid 2,500. That man got up from that table walked away. My family was looking down. My husband and mother were there. They couldn't even believe I was bold enough, but I heard God. He left us sitting there. My family shaking their heads at me, and I'm just looking at him. The man left was upset, but God was talking to him. God was talking, and there were some other factors that I wasn't aware of, which was he had to sell it or he was going to walk away with nothing. I didn't know it, but the window opened. Me with my 2,500 walked through. Within a week, he called me back. He said, I need that 2,500 in at least a cashier's check. Can you do that? I said, I can do it. I can do it. Bought that franchise with 2,500, paid him out of the profits, made that one of the most profitable stores. Then I bought the building that was with it. And then because we were such good operators, we had an opportunity to get another store. Then the franchise company liked the way we did it. They paid us to open a third store. And then we sold it at a profit, but I still owned the building so we could collect the rent. With $2,500 for a $295,000 franchise. That story was for somebody in the room talking yourself out of going forward to getting things because you're looking at your bank account instead of looking at his account. So you got to stop talking yourself out of what God has already put into your path. It's in the house. Somebody said, that's my word. That's my word. That's my word. That's my word. The money is already here in the house. Who's watching my time, Lady Shawnee? The, nobody. Oh my gosh, 10 minutes. We, we gotta, we gotta, okay. All right, all right. 
Y'all gonna tell me to take my time. I ain't got but 10 minutes left, but all right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm I'm okay, somebody put 20 minutes on the clock for me. All right, somebody. All right, there you go. There you go. I will work my questions and answers. So as you're thinking, I want you writing down some good stuff for me. Write down some notes. But the Lord is talking. I know he's talking because this is not the direction I plan to go. So somebody's getting something, and you're going to manifest some big things in your life. Ain't no need to send the midwife to help you birth something out if you ain't got nothing in there to birth. Somebody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Oof, big dog. Oof. Mm. Woo. Listen, some of you, you got to get your beat back. Things happen. You forgot. You got to get your beat back. You, 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 you hanging around the wrong people. People are in your life for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. You trying to make everybody lifetimers. They should have no space in your front row, and you're listening to them. You need to put them in the back, in the bleachers. I can't hear you. And when it's time for you to do something big, remember this. When my son was little, uh, he's 19 now, but when he was a little boy, I used to take him to the circus all the time to see the clowns. He loves seeing the clowns. So we go to the circus, and I, we, we had bad seats one time, and we were sitting on the side. And so I was watching. He's looking at the clowns, but I'm looking at what's happening in the back. So they use the clowns as distractions so they can change the sets. So when you're about to do something great and do something big, every clown you know. Here come the clowns. Every clown you know, old clowns, new clowns. Every clown is coming only to distract you. If you don't stay focused, because the clowns are coming to distract you. Somebody say, stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. You too busy over here. That's a clown situation. They said this, that's a clown situation. You ain't got time for the clowns. And they coming for you. You don't think that you come into something like this. I flew all the way in here from Fort Lauderdale to tell you that something great and something big is going to happen to you, for you, and through you, and you don't think you're not going to leave here and deal with some clowns? Somebody say it's a distraction. It's a distraction. You know that phone number that calls. Don't answer. Don't answer. Why do you allow people to take you down that rabbit hole? Don't answer that. How long is it going to take you for you to get back on track because you answered that call? It's a distraction. Stop checking their IG. It's a distraction. You know she don't like you. It's a distraction. I don't even know where I was. <laughs> stay focused. Tell, say, say, stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. I, I got to stay focused myself. So when you're doing something great, you have to get delivered from people because they will try to talk you out of your greatness to keep you average like them because they don't know what to do. 
You don't need to be doing all that. You need to take a rest. I'm not resting in my go for it season. It's time to elevate your life, your relationships, and get the beat back. I was on the plane and I was just sharing with one of my team members how it was a rough flight. Everybody, everybody, I, you, you, look, I, I, I'm the one that got to take a plane back, but it was a rough flight. I'm talking about, first, it was good. Isn't this like life? It was smooth. And I was, I, I was listening to some good gospel, you know, like, oh, yes, Lord. And then out of nowhere came some clear air turbulence. I'm going along good. And out of nowhere, and not only was it turbulence, the plane dropped, and I had on my good headphones, my beats, and they flew off my head into the middle of the aisle. Flight attendant jumped up, hit her head, and she was passed out. So she passed out. Other flight attendant couldn't get there. So people are trying to help. The plane is going there. Now, I wasn't worried about it going too far, but I was worried about my beats I couldn't get back. Look, in the middle of all that, I, I unbuttoned my seatbelt. I put my foot out there. I said, I'm going to get them beats back. I found my way sliding, y'all. I got out, got them beats back. Who in here, you need to get that beat back? You need to get your beat back. You have a rhythm, a sound. We know you when you coming. We should know who you are when you walk into the room. I don't care if nobody else knows who you are, but once you come in there in your full anointed power, you should have a beat. You should have a sound. It's time that you get your beat back. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to do something. Some of y'all stood out in that rain today. I saw you with that umbrella. I don't know if you had rain hair on or not, but you stood out there because it was more important what you were getting versus some rain on a head. Because when you are at the point that you know it's your time and you understand distractions come and you don't care about that because it's time to get your beat. It's time to get your business. It's time to get your money. And you can spot the clown a mile away. You don't indulge them. You, 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 don't, you just, just smile and keep doing what you're doing because there are big things coming but at the door. Some of you just ain't been answering the door because you don't have your beat. You don't know how you're going to manage it all. You, know not, you ain't got to worry about that. There is everything you need in that opportunity once you open the door. When you leave here, I want you to start answering the call of the opportunity. Not the clown, but the opportunity. And start walking with your beat. We need too much approval as women from too many people. You're not going to get consensus. You're not going to get approval from everybody. But you're going to have to know that God said it even though nobody else can see it, and you're going to walk it out, and then you know what everybody's going to say? You know what? I knew you could do it. I always saw that on you. I knew you could. That ain't what you said, but you... you. Get your beat back. Third point. Third point. Y'all with me? Y'all still with me? Yeah. Y'all know now they, they're so good to me in the back because now I'm for real. Now I'm down to the 10. So that, it was like the 10 on top of the 20, but I, okay, they, for real. Listen, 
This is your big dog season. Oh, yeah. So just in case some of you don't know the story about my sweet Coco, who is at this point about 90 pounds. She's a big German shepherd, long hair, my Coco. Now listen to this. I was going through something, even after I had sold my business, had done great things, I was starting to forget some things. Started to forget, thought maybe I just need to go sit down and retire. That's what I was thinking. And my Coco used to play when she was a puppy. She was always big, but she, she, she's a shepherd. So she would play in the mirror and she would lick the mirror, lick the mirror, always so happy to see her reflection and bark at it and run. And then she grew up and hadn't seen herself in a while. And my son put the mirror to her face and she ran. She ran because the image that was staring at her was this big, confident dog. And she didn't remember that that was her. So for all the big dogs out here today, to all the Cocos sitting here, for all the I am her in this room, don't you forget, based on where you've been, what you've been through, that you are a big dog. Woof, 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 woof. We forget, based on momentary setbacks, the thing that's going to lunge you forward, you get stuck. And you start living that broken record failure over and over and over again, and it holds you back, hostage to an old place, to some old things. And God is saying, will these dry bones live? Stir up the gifts that are already in you. I know what's in you. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Stop telling God who you are and listen to who he says you are. Come on, big dogs. It's time that you remember the mirror is right in front of you and you cannot run away. You got to face what you see, that power, that strength and confidence, and stop trying to dumb it down for people. You better walk in that confidence and that power. But we, be, we be dumbing it down, trying to be small for small people. Because anybody with some power and strength don't want you to be small. They want you to call wolf. That's how we know each other. We know each other from the wolf. We ain't backing down, playing small for small people. No, we're going to be who God has called us to be. We're going to be bold. We're going to be confident. And we're going to do big things and great things. There's some stirring happening. There's some of you with so many pots on the stove. That's why you don't really know what to do first. Because you got all of these things. Let me, let me speak this to you. There are levels to the things that are in you. You just get started and then more will come. Then the next thing you know, you're a best-selling author. Then another thing you know, you got an international group. There are levels to all these gifts in you. And you're going to keep sitting down on these gifts when there are levels, but you got to get going first. Somebody got to get stepping. You got to step out, find out, because there are levels. And let God prove himself to you, because he will. If he tells you to do it, I don't care what your checkbook says. And when God is finished with a season, don't hold on to it for dear life. When he's finished with that or finished with them, 
We ain't finished with it all. You keep moving with him. That's what people say. How do you, how do you stay relevant? I ain't worried about staying relevant. I, I'm worried about staying moving with God. Because that's how you stay relevant. You keep going from glory to glory, from strength to strength. You keep doing more that he's placed in you. It's so much more. It's wells inside of you. But what are you going to do? Are we going to keep sitting back? Or are we going to start making sure we hook up with the right people? There are mentors out there. You, if you don't have one, you need to get one. You can't get one, you need to buy one. You need to get with somebody who is going to demand those gifts to come out of you, to stir that thing up just like Paul did with Timothy. How much is in you? How, how much? We sit back on millions, millions. Because we're not willing to step outside the comfort zone. And then we're worried about what people are going to say. And the friends, so we be worried about people you ain't even going to know in three years. You ain't even going to be talking to them. Come five years, you don't even know where they're going to be. And you worry about what they're talking about? This is the season to trust God. And you need everybody around you. Who believes that? And as I make my third close, <laughs> I'm trying to move back. I will say this. I want you to trust God. And, and, and you're going to inbox me this one. God is going to do something so big outside of you. And all you're going to think about is the deposit that you received today. If Lady Shawnee would have allowed it, I would have kept you for three hours today. That's how much I have to say. Now, if you ate some of them waffles and chicken, you may not be able to sit here for three hours with me. <laughs> but I want you to get this so bad, and I want to hear the testimony. My husband and I were first married, and he had a, 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 a what you call it, a twin house, in Philadelphia, value was like 80 some thousand back then, like I said, almost 30 years. But here I was, I wanted the 4,000 square foot home. I wanted this big home and, and, and anyway, we went, we didn't qualify for whatever reason, but I was sitting in the home one day and the builder came in. So I want you to think about, here you are sitting here minding your business and here comes the Lord, because he knows you're ready. You showed up, you listen to me, you give your, Come on, come on, big dogs. You showed up. I showed up. I was sitting in the house as if I owned it and hadn't gotten approved, got turned down, actually. And this man walks through. I didn't know who he was. I said, oh, this is such a beautiful house. Would you like me to show you around? And he started laughing. Now, I didn't even work there. I'm going to show the man around. He said, I'm the builder. He said, I'm Canuso, I'm the builder. I was like, wow, I love this house. He said, are you thinking about buying? I said, well, I was, but we got turned down. He said, give me all the paperwork that you submitted. Ah, uh, yes, sir. The next day, I had the folder. You know, it wasn't electronic back then, y'all. You know, it was paperwork. The file was this big. I met with the lender to get the file back, gave it. Now, he is not the lender. He is the builder. See, y'all talking to the wrong people. You talking to the wrong people. You better talk to the architect of your life, the builder of your life, the one who knew you, the one who formed you. That's who you talk to. But I know you're saying, but he ain't the lender. I, you, we don't have to worry about that. That ain't our business. I'm talking to the builder. I met with the builder. I gave him the paperwork. And in two weeks, I don't know who he gave it to. Some man started calling and asking questions. I got this man all the documentation. Within two weeks, we were approved where we couldn't be approved before. <laughs> a 
And at that point, I, I, I think I had been, uh, you know, like you, you go to the meetings, I've, I've been like one year clean on my credit. You know, I, <laughs> my name is Tracy Lynn and I'm like one year clean. But <laughs> so didn't have the strong, my husband had good credit. One of the reasons I married you. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> so gave all of that and we got approved. Now listen to this. Here we go again. Here go. So, if, so if you wonder, how do I stand so strong on the Lord because I've seen him do it over and over and over again. I go to the builder, not to the people. So I go to the close and they sent me a letter. I needed a certified check for $18,000. I think in my bank account I had like a 5000 at that point. And uh, then it got a little less. As we got closer, might have had about three grand. So they said, now we're having closing on this day, get the certified funds. I went and certified my three grand and went on to the closing table. My husband said to me, he said, now, I don't know how we got 18,000. I didn't see it. He said, we got all the money. I said, we got all the money. I did, I took all the money. And when we got to the closing table, I had it in an envelope, y'all. And they were talking, and they said, we're going to need the money now. So I would slide the envelope. They said, wait a minute, not yet. I slide the envelope back. <laughs> so my husband said, let me look in this envelope. He looked in there and saw 3,000. Knew we had to, I got the hardest kick on my leg. I didn't, I, I was not phased. I didn't look to the left nor to the right. I kept my head straight ahead. I did not react to that. I stayed focused because I saw what God was doing. I didn't know how he was going to do it all, but I heard him, I saw him, and then they said, okay, we need the 18,000. And they said, wait a minute, something's going on. And they went into a huddle, start talking. Oh, we didn't count three of the payments you already made. Wait a minute, calculate. So you only owe 8,000. And I'm sitting there with still my three. And they said, wait a minute, we got to recalculate it. And then I could see my husband looking at me in, in surprise, but I still wouldn't even look at him. <laughs> and they went back and went back and said, you know what? It's like 2,500. <laughs> I slid my 3,000 and said, give me my change. So I know what God can do. He is not a respecter of persons. He just needs a yes and an amen. Will you be the ones who is ready to be that big dog in that big dog season? Ready to stand up and do what you're supposed to do, big dog. Let's go, let's get it, because this is your season. Thank you. I'm an additional three minutes over time. Lady Shawnee, how do we proceed? What do we do? How you, you want questions and answers, anybody? Yes, I, I, I came ready for you. So if, if it's okay, I, I will absolutely, uh, questions and answers, we're, go, we're gonna take a few. I really wanted to do that part because I, I, want, I want testimonies. At Dr. Tracy Lynn, T-R-A-C-I-L-Y-N-N, -N, got on a green suit with a check. That's how you know it's me. So. Over that way, Question, questions, you, you're telling me something. Oh, that's no. what you're telling me, thank you. Okay, so first question. Hi, I, I'm Rosalind. I have self-published 11 books. Then the Lord had me write this 12th book. He said, you cannot self-publish this book. The distribution is wider than what you can offer. So the book title is From Unhoused to Entrepreneur. 
triumph over every setback. And so I don't know how to find a publisher. I, I did the paperwork, read the requirements for Zonder Van and some of the others, but I'm like, God, you need to send me the publisher. So that's my question. Okay. How do I find the right publisher? Wonderful, great question. The first thing you can do, Amazon will take it and you don't have to put out any money. They'll pay you a royalty like a publisher would. So that's a way to get national distribution with just an upload to their site. You can put people to it and then they send you a check for every sale. So instantly, you are already national without you spending another dime for self-publishing and you ain't got them books all in the garage. So that's one avenue. And then start looking, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you another secret. There are books that are out there, right, that you might already know about. Go to wherever you go for books. Look at who the publisher is. Look at women who look like you. Who's published their books? Send them a treatment and ask them who do they deal with to represent so that you can prepare a book treatment for them. You can start it on the Amazon site. I started my book on Amazon, then I got picked up by a publisher because they saw the work, they saw the Instagram, and they contacted me. But right there, pick up the book. Look who it is. Contact them. If they say, well, we don't deal direct, we only would deal with a, if, if you have representation, give me some names. Be surprised what they'll give you just because you asked. And then prepare a book treatment, and there you go. But in the meantime, we're still selling over here and getting us a royalty check. Oh, we took a picture right there. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so my name is Marquita Johnson. I am the CEO of Mommy Making Millions. And my question for you, Dr. Tracy, is I'm a visionary, right? And I hear you talk about the levels of the vision that God has given us. And sometimes the vision is just so overwhelming that it just consumes us because we want the end result as opposed to going through the process. So I just kind of wanted some tactical tips or just some inf what, just what your insight is on how you navigate it from where you were when you didn't have the millions, right, to um, how, you, what, how you went through the process and when you were manifesting the millions. So, like, I don't know if my question was clear, but... I, I, I'm, I'm getting you. How I did understand. you structure mm -hmm. the, pa the, the, the pathway to right. your purpose? Understood. So it's, it's not always going to be the structure you might like. Not when you give it to the Lord. It may wind and curve, clowns. I, I'm, that's why I'm telling you all of that. However, start with a piece of the vision. You start with a piece. You can handle the piece. And then as your capacity expands, you'll be able to hand, handle more of the vision. So start with what you, what you have. You might need a VA. You might need a virtual assistant to help you with the different pieces and then give you the structure that your mind is craving for. Like, this is what I'm going to do. So this year, the goal is, now you'd be surprised how many entrepreneurs will stand up, say, I heard millions in the name of your business. I, I, huh? Okay. I knew it was something about millions. I heard the millions. I didn't hear the mommies, but I heard the millions then how many millions are you going to make this year? So that's the first thing. Set the goal. Make it plain. And watch all of heaven come and give you information, insight, wisdom, and answers. You need to set a clear goal. Mom's making, mommy's making millions. Well, how many millions is mommy's making? So I need a goal now. What is the first step? Mommy's making one million this year. Mommy's making overall 50 million. Mommy's making what? Because the, the key is expansion. And before you can have big expansion, you've got to be expanding. Your mind's got to be expanding. Your knowledge has got to be expanding. You've got to come to more of these kind of things. You need to be poured into so that you can see it. But start with where you are and then go bigger. Challenge yourself. Let me tell you something. I was lifting weights in the house, and then they said I was shrinking. I did this bone density. Now I was lifting weights in the house. I got a full gym at the house but I ain't have no accountability. So I'm doing the same little exercises. I ain't going up. And I come out of there to the gym like, woof, like I did something. I ain't do nothing, 
with the same two exes. I needed accountability. Had to get myself up at 420 to be in the gym at 530. Why? Because the woman training me said I got to be there at 530. Mmm, accountability. See, we ain't willing to do that because I was in my gym at 930, 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, I got to get up at 420. Then I quit. And then the next morning, I didn't need an alarm, but I got up and went. I don't care if you quit, as long as you wake up the next day and keep going. <laughs> accountability. You need more accountability. Number one, set a goal, love. Mommy's making millions. How much is mommy going to make this year? So you need a goal right now. You're going to have to set your goal, and then we're going to break that thing down in chunks. And then you're going to expand beyond just you. Because if it's mommies, that's plural. What else you need? And more will come as you expand your capacity and willingness to take on more. Good afternoon, Dr. Tracy Lynn. My name is Natalia, um, and I just have a question as far as when you feel like you are talented in multiple different areas and aspects in life, how do you go about where to actually put your talent into? Like if I say I've invested so much money into different things and I failed at them and I get discouraged, but I know I can do it, how do you put your mindset to choosing, basically? Understood. I had three failed businesses before I ever had one successful one. And so it takes that. But the difference is the business has failed. I didn't fail. I was trying it out. I'm just having a good time trying it out. So I put my money into three things that failed, but I didn't get discouraged because I didn't fail. Them businesses failed me because they were the wrong place. But what it did, it got me closer to my purpose. And so even last year, once I semi-retired and sold my business, I got my real estate license. I'm sitting up in a real estate office. I thought maybe I was going to sell luxury homes. I didn't know. And I'm sitting up there, I ain't selling nothing, making coffee every day, just grinning at the people. <laughs> Felt all out of place. But I'm up in there at all the meetings. How y'all doing? Yeah, OK. Ain't sold nothing. And then while I was going, found my purpose. So I'm an investor. Every house I've ever had, I've sold it with the furniture. So I'm a real estate investor. Didn't understand that. But it was because I was up in there thinking I was going to do one thing. And then next thing you know, I'm a coach. Duh. Been a coach for over 30-something years and didn't even realize that that was a part of the next iteration of me. There are iterations, sweetie, to who you are. Levels and iterations. Be willing to go from iteration to iteration. And then it looks like this. Well, we can rebuild her. We can make her faster and stronger and more bionic, even though the parts are real. But anyway, <laughs> that's how it feels because that's iteration of you. You good. Keep going. You all right. Dr. Tracy, right here. Right here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, my name is Manuela. So I have an LLC for three years now, and I am also an author. So I have three books, like you said, on Amazon. Um, the one I just released has been in honor of my sister who passed away from breast cancer. And that one is doing well. What I struggle with in my business, I feel like I hear God's vision, but then the fear of what he shows me scares me. So I'm always bringing people along with me. Then I get rejected. Then I get um, discouraged. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in the season of discouragement, but I fought my way here. Meet me right here. First of all, I don't know what the LLC was. You told me it was an LLC. You didn't tell me what the LLC was. Events? OK. So you say that over LLC. LLC is just a formation of a corporation. So you know everybody's like, you know, I got my LLC. Well, that, that, you know, do the work, right? OK. So you were in a season of discouragement because you brought other people along for the ride. And when the ride stops, the people get off. <laughs> Why the ride is good? Everybody's eating. But then when the ride stops, folks get off. Stop bringing people in to a vision they have no part of. 
They can't speak into what they didn't start and what they don't have part of. So I'm going to pray for you because we're going to get you out of that season of discouragement. And you're in that season because the wrong people are around you. So we're going to go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus that you, your hands are blessed, your hands are anointed, and I speak to your mind right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to your mind. Oh, yeah, I break that what they said off of you in the name of Jesus. I break it. I break it. It will no longer hold you, have any power over you. You will go here from here free. You are free. You are whole. Stop talking to the wrong people. Thank you, Lord. Freedom. You're going to go out of here and do some great things. Great things in Jesus' name. Mm. Thank God for the cloth ministry. Won't he do it? We got one more question. Yes, Lord. She's going to be a new person when she gets up. Did I have the one question somewhere? It's true. Oh, it's over here, the one it's, question? Uh, yeah, my, I'm over here. All right. I oh, am her. Before, before, amen, she is her. Let, let, we're going to take one from each side. Also, I'm going to be in the Bloom room when I finish. I'll be over there uh, signing some books and taking some, some, some pictures and talking. So I'm going to the Bloom room when I finish. So if you didn't get me right now, right here, I, I'm, I'm going to be over there. And I'm coming to church tomorrow. So amen. I couldn't be all the way in Houston and not get some of this good stuff. Good stuff. I, I'm family up in here. Yeah, I am. I'm a born winner, born to win. All I do is win. Oh, um, you rapping now. Win, all my win, life. Win, no matter I mean, what. Come on. Literally all my life. I've been tithing since I was 19. Okay. Been on the Price is Right and won all this. And I've won okay. monies and monies and monies. Over Oops. my lifetime, uh -huh. I ain't never had to worry about no money. I ain't had no 401k or nothing. I, 25 years in the pen. Um, what do I do with my money to make it work for me? Because these banks ain't paying nothing right now. Mm. So, oh, I was, oh, I was not. I was in the pen, but I was working at the pen. Okay. I wasn't locked up. We, we, yeah, I know where you wanted me to go with that pen. I, I heard I, I, that. I, I, I ain't know if you want me to say, what was you in the pen for? I ain't know where to go with that pen. Well, I, but I heard it. I should have wrote the vision and made it plain. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. One of, so what I do is stay in my lane and my expertise. But what I do know, real estate is always a good investment. And investing in you is always a good investment. You can talk. You, I mean, that's why they got the professionals to talk to about where your money can go. Should it be in a money market? Now, I do have a Series 6, Series 7. I did that in my early life. I used to work for Vanguard, and I sold real estate investment trust. So I'm taking you all the way back to, like, when I was 21. So real estate has always been a good investment. And talk to someone else about really developing a full portfolio. Make sure you get some estate planning done so that your, your money is protected as it passes on because it sounds like you got enough to start your generational wealth. So you need some estate planning. You need an estate lawyer. Are you, you saw an estate lawyer? All right, well, we talking then. We good. Look at God. That's what she said. Look at God. I see you, big dog. I know. Woo, big dog. I see you. That was good. Over here. Can somebody get, get that for me? Where, where am I? Over here? Okay, here I am. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm a full-time student um, at college, and I'm also a full-time employee. So I want to become a singer, influencer. I want to become all these things. But I'm still paying off classes, don't have access to a vehicle, but 
I know God uses people, objects, and everything to give you signs that you should keep going. I have got so many opportunities to go into the studio. I have got so many opportunities to attend a podcast, but I just don't know where to start because it's just so much for me. So if you can give me advice, it'd be best. Advice as to what to start first while you're doing all those things. Yes. So you got all those opportunities. Have you gone in just to see what I makes the baby leap? I went to the studio the first time, but I was just like, um, I don't think people would like my music or my voice. And so who told you that? Where you get that from? Huh? Who, who told you that? What clown you know? Been told you something crazy like that. Come over here, sweetie. Come give me a hug. Let me whisper one thing to you. Come over here. Come on over here. Listen, you you talking to the wrong people. Nobody told you. Nobody even heard your music. How we know nobody? And you are young. Girl. Listen, listen. You have wrong information. They will love it. If God is telling you to do it, there is gifts in here. And we won't know what they are until you bring them up and let us hear them. You understand that? Stop listening to that. Don't, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. And I'm just, I'm just even anointing your ears to hear only what the Spirit of the Lord is telling you. Okay? And your mind. You're beautiful. You're young. We got to get your mind right right now. You understand that? You got a long way to go. And start doing some things that he has called you to do. Thank you. Let, let us hear your voice. And, and don't talk yourself out of stuff that you don't even know what you're talking about. Okay? So I'm your auntie. You understand? So Auntie says, it's a good voice. Let us hear it. Let us see. Let us step out and find out. Because you're way too young for all of these stoppages. Yeah. Wrong folks around you. Wrong stuff in your ear. All right? So Auntie says, you can do it. You will do it. And you will be great. Okay? All right. Now give your Auntie a kiss. All right. All right. My phone. All right, well, I think that is it, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Woo, 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 woo.